Okay, so we're going to go ahead and start a new topic now. This one is going to be Boolean Algebra. It is going to essentially be very similar to Chapter 1's Propositional Logic. At least for this lecture, it is almost a one-to-one -one mirror to it, very much like how set operations had a lot of crossover Propositional Logic. Boolean Algebra do the exact same thing. So let's go ahead and take a look. Okay, so what algebra is going to be a set of rules and operations for working with variables whose values are either 0 or 1, which is very similar to our false and true from propositional logic. So it's actually a 1 to 1 mirror to propositional logic. The set operations previously, it was in the vein of propositional logic but like you had to actually genuinely think about the attributes being similar with boolean algebra it is far more similar so here we have boolean multiplication which is denoted by the dot operation it applies two elements an alphabet zero and one it obeys the same rules as a logical conjunction operation or in gate logic we call it an end gate so just like uh conjunction it operates in a similar facet. 0 times 0 is 0. 0 times 1 is 0. 1 times 0 is 0. 1 times 1 is 1. So it's literally the exact same as our conjunction operation. So when we get to addition, which is denoted by a plus sign, it's the exact same thing. We use the same alphabet, 0 and 1, because it's going to be Boolean. And we have logical disjunction as opposed to conjunction and it is also known as an or gate in gate logic so just like disjunction works we have 0 plus 0 is 0 0 plus 1 is 1 1 plus 0 is 1 and 1 plus 1 is 1 so exactly the same and then here we have boolean complement can be noted with the bar over the top very much like this right here same thing boolean al algebras 0, 1 alphabet, obeys the same rules as logical negation, also known as a not gate. And just like negation, it acts like a bit flip. So if we have the complement of 0, we get 1. Complement of 1, we get 0. Not a big deal. And just like propositions of logic, we also have precedence rules, or order of operations. The Boolean multiplication takes precedence over addition, Complement operation is applied as soon as the entire bar is evaluated, then parentheses can be used to override the precedence rules as well. And again, this is the exact same thing as proximal logic. We just have some different notations, names, and that's pretty much it. Now, it is not going to have things like conditional statements or biconditional statements. We can do Zor and a lot of other different things, but for the time being, we're just going to look at and not or. So, if we look here, we have two different examples. Present rules we have x times y plus 1 times the complement of z, where x equals y equals z equals 1, basically all of our variables are 1, which means we have 1 times 1, 1. We have the complement of 1, which will be 0. Then we have multiplication here, so we do 1 times 0, which means 0. And finally, we have 1 plus 0's addition, leaving us with a 1. Meanwhile, on the right side, we have x plus z times the complement of 0 plus y. x equals 0, y equals 1, and z equals 1. So here we have 0 plus 1 because it's in parentheses first. So that's going to be 1. We get the complement of that 1. Gives us 0. Uh, 0 times anything is 0. And we know that x is 0. So 0 plus 0 is going to be 0. It's not too bad. And then here we have what is known as an input-output table. This is the Boolean algebra equivalent to propositional logics truth table and essentially it takes all possible inputs and yields whatever functional output it would have so no different than truth table here and we also have boolean algebra's equivalency clause 
this time denoted by a regular equal sign and if they have the same value for every possible combination of values then it's going to be equivalent so just like with problems with logic and set logic we also have the advent of boolean algebra laws now this is the exact same thing as from propositions of logic's laws as well. The only difference is our falses are zeros, our trues are one, and then our disjunction is addition, our conjunction is multiplication, our negation is now complement, and that's pretty much it. Now we do lose out on the conditional laws and stuff like that because they're not very necessary here. We could implement conditional statements using Boolean algebra, but we're not going to do that because there just be no point at this right now. So we'll just move on and take a look at this example. So we have x times y plus complement of x times y plus z times y. We want to simplify this. So first thing, we can apply the distributed law, factor out this x, we'll go ahead and factor out the uh, complement as well. So we end up with x plus the complement of x times y plus z times y. So with the complement law, right here, which will yield a 1, this gives us the identity law of 1 times y, which gives us y, we can factor out the y's here with the distributed law, we end up with 1 plus z times y, 1 plus anything is 1 based on the domination law, and then 1 times y is going to be y based on the identity law. So we just have a y. That's pretty much it. And just to wrap this up, I'll show the equivalency from Boolean algebra operations to set operations. So multiplication is going to be the exact same thing as intersection. Addition, exact same thing as union. Complement is set complement. One is going to be the whole set of A. Then zero is the empty set. And that's pretty much it for Boolean Algebra. There's not a lot of difference here from Proposition Logic, especially in terms of conjunction to multiplication, disjunction to addition, negation to complement. They are one to one mirror. That's kind of the entire point of this video in general is to show hey, we've already done this. We're now just taking the ideas we've already done and applying it in a different manner. So we have stripped some things out like the conditional statements, the biconditional statements, our quantifiers and the like, and we kind of have more of a narrow subset of operations, but we're going to do very different things with those operations in the next two videos. So we'll go over that then. For now, hope you learned something. I'll see you in the next video.